But people get upset when I complain about the pile on text. It's like calling their babies ugly. I'm just being honest. We've got 7.1 kilowatt hours of solar panels on our roof. They're LG um, solar panels. Uh, we've got 20 of them. And we've got a Victron Quattro 48 volt 10,000 VA inverter and seven US 3000C batteries. They're three and a half kilowatt hours each. So, um, and then all the other stuff that we've got um, as well to make all that work. We have 25.2 kilowatt hours of uh, storage in these batteries but we only have 23.6 of usable storage because these go down to 95% um, depth of discharge DOD. Yeah so this video really is about how we're getting on with our um, Pilotech and uh, Victron um, gear for our solar and it's really good actually it's been going really well. We've still got some issues with our Pilotech batteries um, they do have internal error failures still it's something we still got to look at we've been really busy we've had a baby we're trying to sort out water we're trying to sort out food we're in that sort of time where everything is coming together we did have eight batteries we had problems with one it wouldn't start up okay that's a bit of a bugger we tried to bump start it um, by connecting it to other batteries which is what was advised to us by the people uh, the company who bought it off and it still wouldn't come alive but all the other batteries sat together, daisy chained to balance them for hours. We had one come on with an internal failure straight away and they said that's normal, they do get funny things that happen when you charge them. We charged them fully and we had no problems with them for four months uh, and after four months the weather started getting cold and we weren't getting as much charging to them as well because we're coming into winter and then we started getting internal failures again. and. Um, but a lot of people don't worry about it. Our supplier said there is a problem with the 3000 C's that Pylon Tech know about. So he didn't go into what exactly that problem was, but they do know there's a problem. There was a guy on, on our channel said he installs these things, their company stopped installing them because of problems with an internal fuse that's going off due to something about um, the firmware uh, needs updating on them. Uh, we've not updated the firmware. Um, we've not we've not got round to doing that sort of thing, so that might be something that we need to try and do. Um, but as I say, we're we're really busy with with stuff. In summer, we've got too much power. Really, it's frustrating. We could do with charging something up and be able to move it and share it around the family. You know, move power to people because by nine o'clock this is fully charged this morning it was fully charged it's fully charged now and um, but then in winter you haven't got enough when you get those grey days a couple of days and you're out especially if you're trying to heat these things a lot of talk about what temperatures these all these like to be charged at and there's some stuff there's some diagnostic wet um, um, stuff online that you can get in a plug-in and it says on about checking the cell voltage when charging it should be between 20 and 25 degrees and there's anecdotal evidence on the Victron Pylon Tech community that also states that if it drops below 18 degrees they won't charge as quick as they can so it doesn't matter how many panels you've got on the roof they slow down if these things are cold and also what they're suggesting on the diagnostic um, thing is the 6,000 cycles that these are predicted to do isn't expected if you start going colder than that 20 to 25 degrees. It's a lot of money, a thousand pounds each, but it's still not as dear as some things where you have to pay six grand out. That modular design is excellent, so it all works brilliantly. People get upset when I complain about the pylon text. It's like calling their babies ugly. I don't mean to do that. It's just honesty with what we're finding. I don't expect to keep having internal failures. I just don't like it. At what time do you add another battery? So some stuff online I've found out they said that two to five years you should be looking to add another battery to these because of degradation. Um, lead acid is a no-no because if it's gone to 70% degradation on your old batteries and then you add a new one, that new one will then be 
back at 70% with those ones at that at that point it's just not worth it it's believed so but these lithium iron phosphate they reckon you can um, add them one on the website said that you can add another battery and that one will be a hundred percent the others might be 80% but it will use the whole lot of that battery as well there's the there's technology there to do that I'd love to know if that's true if someone knows that I can't find the website uh, anymore um, if someone knows that that's the case that would be brilliant um, because I'd have liked to perhaps add some in eight years time is it worth it in eight years time I just don't know now um, reading the two to five years thing people are saying but that's not specific to the pylon techs so that was lithium iron phosphate in, in sort of a general chat is what they're talking about so if pylon techs can be added new batteries and they use a hundred percent that new battery and then that is fantastic we're really happy with what we've, we've got um, you know we get people say about you paid too much we know people that have got the um, the Chinese brands of, of, of things the apps don't work properly and uh, you worry about whether they're gonna be here one day and gone the next um, but with Victron is a premium brand and we sort of learn, learn to trust the brand it's been around for donkeys years and um, you know, so so that's what we went for we're so busy with the off-grid thing that we we haven't got time to go keep going back if things don't work properly and um, we haven't had to do that with the Victron stuff so far we're really lucky and, and we, we you know we paid the money it's like buying a Kia or a Jag they both get you from A to B, but it's about the journey. You know, what's that journey going to be like? And um, we wanted to just try and have an easy ride, if you like, through. I'm not a time-served installer because this is off-grid. It's an off-grid channel and um, we, uh, we're we doing everything. It's not my thing at all. You know, so if, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's that's the whole point of, of the programme. It's it's a not how you should do it, it's how we've done it but I have tried to do everything right I've got the proper fuses you know some people just go straight, straight from there to the inverter it's fine, it's up to you, it's up to you live and let live, you know that's 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 the way we are someone said that um, what I had up here was unsafe they said um, our lightning protection was unsafe it should have a cover over it um, they are switches so you have got to go near them to turn them no one's gonna fall on them up here it's no one's having a barn dance it is in a roof of barn it's locked up it's away from our children and it would look better with a cover over it but trying to find a cover for it is a bit of a pain and then all the wires going in I just don't need to do it it's totally out of the way you know it's common sense really hopefully uh, people that are trying to get off the grid or have their own power supply at home because of the state of uh, the world at the moment um, hopefully it helps you out and uh, good luck thanks very much for watching